let our lives tell your story. Amen. You, you know that that's giving us a clue, folks, that we need to be getting more and more like Jesus. We need to be getting more and more like Jesus. Let our lives tell the story of Jesus. So praise God, ever change from glory to glory. Did everybody come expecting this morning? Yes, yes. Everybody came expecting this morning. It is a good day. It's a good day to be here. Praise God. Wind stopped, so we can't complain about that this week, or today at least, anyway. So, well, we'll find something. Don't worry about it. I'm going to start this morning because we got some territory to cover. So I want to start this morning. And I'm going to be reading to you this morning from the book of Matthew and chapter 25. And I want to read beginning at verse 14. And it says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And Unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. He left. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. So he doubled them. And likewise, he that had received two talents, he also gained another two. But he that had received the one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought the other five talents, saying, Lord, you delivered unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said to him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then, then, he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you were are a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, and gathering where you had not straw. And I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the earth. Look, there, here has your money. This is yours. His Lord answered and said unto him, You wicked and slewful servant. You knew that I met reaped where I sowed not, and gathered where I have not straw. You ought, therefore, to have put my money to the exchangers, and then, at my coming, I should have received money and usury. I should have received my money and some interest. Take, therefore, the talent from him, and give it unto him which has ten. For unto every man that has shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he has. And cast ye 
this unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I would suggest that you read the complete or the entire chapter 25 of Matthew. And you will see that it is comprised of three parts. It has the part of personal preparations, the parable of the ten virgins, five wise, five foolish. And then it has the faithful service, the one we just read, the parable of the talents. And then it has the judgment, the coming of the king who sits on his throne and separates the sheep from the goats. When you read those, you will see that it completes us. So I would advise you to read that and, and just take it all in. Just where it is. But I want to deal today, we want to deal with the middle one, which was the parable of the talents, the faithful service. We want to deal with that. I say we because I knew you guys would agree that that's the one we should look at because it has a lot to offer. It has a lot to inform us of, and it has a lot to enlighten us about, to give us a, a better view of our path. You see, a talent was a large sum of money, the five, the two, and the one. We're dealing with a large sum of money. If you had one talent of gold, one talent of gold, it would be worth $5,760,000, one talent. And he gave his first guy five. And if it was silver, if the talent you had was silver, it would be worth $384,000. So you see, this is serious business, and this is a lot of money. So he was wise to give it to them according to their abilities. You see, think about it. what would you do if somebody gave you five million seven hundred and sixty thousand dollars? It, it, it would be something culture shock for sure. So you see, this this was a serious matter here, and then he gives us. Three typical types of people. The one who would go out and, and go as hard as he could, nonstop. That's the type of person who just won't give up. He's just going, nonstop. And then you have a guy who does whatever it takes to get the job done. And then you have the third type who's looking for the best way to do nothing. <laughs> just, just hang out and he's just out there. But we have to understand what is taking place here. This is people in their environment. This is people doing what they do. To each man, he's operating in his ability. So you see the outcomes and the results is not going to be the same for everybody because it is according to their own ability. Some of us are go-getters and some of us are laid back. But if we get to the, the, the heart of this story, we'll find that when we started reading, it says that the kingdom of heaven is like. The kingdom of heaven is like. Not the kingdom of heaven is, but the kingdom of heaven is like. So you see, this is not even real. This is not real. This is a parable. As it states, when you, when you read it, it will probably list it out. The parable of the day. It is a parable. A parable being a fictitious story that reveals truth, that tells us some truth, but the story itself is fictitious. So what this leads us to is that Jesus is the man. Jesus is the man, and he's telling the story, and he's making them aware of the fact that he's leaving. He's leaving. For three and a half years, he has been delivering his goods 
to the earth. And his goods. What are his goods? What, what is Jesus' goods? What did he leave us that was so valuable? His word. His word and his promises. His word and his promises. So you see, each one of us has been entrusted with a task according to our abilities. We've all been entrusted with tasks according to our abilities. And then we are to go out and take care of those. But you did understand and you saw where it says that the guy who got the five talents, he got the same reward as the guy who had the two talents. Mm -hmm. There was no difference. He said, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of my Lord. Mm -hmm. Each one of them got the same reward. So God is no respect of person. He treats us all the same. So therefore, he makes it so that we can all reach our potentials. But it's up to us. Well done, my good and faithful servant. And that is what we seek to hear. We want to hear that. We desire to hear that. And that is why we're here this morning. We come to church. We do what we think is right because we want to enter into that gate and hear those words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. And that is a prize. That is a great prize. It puts me in the mind of seeing a man who plays with his dog, you know, he takes a stick and he throws the stick and the dog go gets the stick and when he comes back, he takes the stick out of the dog's mouth and he say, good boy, good boy. And that dog, his tail is wagging so fast and so hard, it just picks his feet up off the ground. He's just happy because his master's paying him some attention. That is how I picture us when Jesus says to us, well done, my good and faithful servant. We will just be overjoyed. Overjoy, just happy to the core because it won't say that we've done what we were supposed to do. We've done what he wanted us to do. We have pleased him. And that is why he said, well done. But stop and think again. Stop and think again. And ask yourself, am I a good and faithful servant? Am I a good and faithful servant? Have I done well? Or when the master comes back, am I going to stand there and say, well, you know, I, I was going to, or uh, I meant to, or, uh, uh, yeah, well, I should have. That won't cut it. It's not going to cut it. See, we are in that second phase of that parable. The man is in that far country. Jesus is in heaven. And he doesn't wear a watch. The Bible tells us that one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. So time is not an issue for him. But for us, time matters. And he's been gone for over 2,000 years. So that's a long time. That's a long time. So. We don't know when he's going to come back to reckon with us. But we have to be ready. We have to have completed our task. And some of us will say to ourselves, well, you know, what if he gets back before I complete my task? You see, he made it so that we wouldn't have that problem. And this is the beauty and the love of God. He will never give us a chore that we can't handle. He will never task us with anything that we can't do. So therefore, he left us his word and his promise. So you see, every time we share God's word, we're done. When you tell somebody God loves you, you're finished. That's the best you can do. You need to come to Christ because he loves you. That's it. That's a complete. 
You see, he made it that way. So we wouldn't have to be continuously trying to complete the task so when he come back we would still be in the middle. You see, but sometimes we get caught up in the task and think that because we're sharing the word with somebody, we have to stay with them until they get it. Or we have to make sure they get it. Or we're not going to stop bugging them until they get it. We're going to make sure this person gets saved. That is not our chore. That is not our task. Our task is to give them the word, and once we give them the word, then their part is to receive the word and act upon it. And then God's part is to cleanse them from all unrighteousness and accept them into the kingdom. You see, we don't have to stay with them and make sure that they come to Christ. Just give them the word. So when he comes back, then we can give our accounting. And we will be able to give our accounting. Yes, I shared the word with 700 people, or two people, or one people. He will already have the stats. You see, because he knows everything. But when we give our account, we will be done. And he will be able to say to us, well done. My good and faithful servant. That's our chore. That's our task, to share the word of God. He reinforces that when he leaves. He tells them to go into all of the world. You know the, the chapter and the verse, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. He tells go into all the world and preach the gospel. He is saying what he has told us, Lord, that we've all been entrusted with his word. The most valuable thing that he had. That is God's goods. His word. And when we share God's word, we are sharing what? The good news. Glad tidings. We're sharing God's word. That's what we have. Because that's what he left with us. And when he comes back and we give our accounting, then he will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And we look at the, 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 the one guy who, who had the one talent. He, did you see how when he showed up, what he said? He said, I knew you. I know you. I know you. And you're not right. So therefore, I didn't do anything with what you gave me. See, he started out with a lie on his lips. The first time. You see, because if he knew the man, if he knew anything, he would have known that what the man gave him was for his benefit, and that was good. What he gave him was for his benefit, and that was good. It was good because he didn't deserve it. He hadn't earned it. It was a gift. It was a gift. And what did he do? He took it out and buried it. And the Lord called him wicked. The Lord called him wicked. Because he had put what God gave him away from him. He had put it away. He buried it. He stepped away from it. And in real time, if you step away from God's word, evil and wickedness is all that's left. That's all there is. is evil and wickedness. If you don't have God's word. Are we, are we following him? Are we visualizing what, what he's saying to us here? And then he called him slowful. Another word, lazy. Mm -hmm. <coughs> he said, lazy. Meaning that he didn't use what he had. It was in his possession. He had given him the talents in his possession. He had them in his possession, but he wouldn't use them. Proverbs 19, 24 speaks of a man who buries his hand in a bowl and refuses to return it to his mouth again. My Bible, the, the King James, the old King James version of the Bible, it, it translates in a different way. It says, 
that a slewful man is, hides his hand in his bosom and refuses to bring it to his mouth again. But the visual that you get from each translation is that a man sitting with bills in a bowl and is too lazy to feed himself. Too lazy to feed himself. So you find a man who died of starvation with a bowl of food in front of him. He won't use what he's been given. So that called him lazy. Lazy, slowful. And when you don't use what God gives you, then there will be weeping and pain, torment, because you're not replenishing yourself. You're not revitalizing yourself. So you're open for whatever comes up on you. And Satan stands ready to pick up whatever is left. And whatever he's getting his hands on. So when we open ourselves up to that sphere of that lifestyle, then weeping, he says, and gnashing of teeth is, is what comes with it. Because there's no God, there's no buffer, there's nothing to repel the wickedness. God has given us everything that we need to succeed. We just have to accept it and use it. He's given us everything that we need to succeed. But we should not go out and bury it. It is his treasure that he's given us. So we can make it ours. Everything that he has and everything that he does is for our benefit. He does not withhold any good thing from his people, and it says that every good and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of life. And here we are, ready and waiting to receive. But we must receive. We have the ability and the opportunity to reject or to refuse. But we want to receive. We want to take what God has given us and use it to its fullest advantage so that we can hear those words, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And you see, we can have that joy right here, right now, by accepting God's gifts. As he says in the model prayer, our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. We can have it now. On earth as it is in heaven. So the transition would be as the man going to a far country. You see, we are excited. If, if somebody say, I'm going to give you a trip to Hawaii, you would be excited about going to that country. You've seen brochures, you've seen movies, you've seen all the glamour, you've seen all of the beauty, and you would be preparing yourself to be a part of that. God has given us a glimpse of his glory, of his heaven. He wants us to be excited about getting to that other side. That is our eternity, and that is where he went to prepare a place for us. And he said, there were mansions there in my father's house, or many mansions, and I go to prepare a place for you. You got the brochure. He's going to prepare the ticket because he said, I will come for you. I won't send TWA or United Airlines or the Greyhound, but I will come for you. So we have to get excited about getting there. So when we get excited about getting there, what do you do? Honey, I'm going to Hawaii next week. I sure wish you would go. That's where you want to be. Child, I got heaven on my mind. And you ought to come with me. You ought to get with me. You are excited. So you share that word and that anticipation with those you come in contact with. He has given you 
the ability. He has given you the material. All it takes is your ability. Each he gave according to their ability. He knows not everybody is going to be out there day and night stomping and preaching the word of God. Some of them are just going to do what they need to do to get the job done. And then there are some who is going to say, well, I'll do this later. I'll, I'll, I'll get back to them later. I, I saw a man who need God, but I'll talk to him later. I, I, I don't have time for that right now. To each his ability. And we're not all going to end up with the same results. Because again, some of us are a little slower than others. Some of us are a little bashful than others. But as that song said, I, I caught that as it was said. It says changing from glory to glory. Meaning doing better and better every day. Doing better and better every day to look like Jesus. Getting your life in order. Changing from glory to glory. And then let our lives tell a story. Do you see where I'm going with this? Sometimes you don't even have to open your mouth if you just act right. <laughs> you can get the message out just acting right. That's what it's talking about. See, so there are ways that we can do what God wants us to do without what we might call inconvenience in ourselves or, or making a fool of ourselves or whatever. But you know, it is better to be a fool for God than just to be a fool. Amen. <laughs> and sometimes, I'm sorry to say, you know, we act foolish. We, we look foolish. So why not to, to make it count for something? That's the message of the faithful service is to do all that you can do according to your ability to share the word of God, to give what God has given you to those that you come in contact with because not all are going to be as enthusiastic as you are. Not all are going to be as inquisitive as you are. Not everybody is gonna, gonna have that excitement about going. And some people will never ever come to a place where they can hear the word of God. They're only gonna get it from you in the checkout line at Smith's. Because everybody's gotta eat. So they're gonna show up at Smith's. So there's your opportunity when, when you're standing there and you tell the cashier, honey, I'm sorry, but I only gave you a 10 and you gave me change for a 50. Here's, here's your money back. Did you see that? Did you see that? She's crazy. I would have kept that money. <laughs> but it wasn't right. It is a point of contact. You didn't have to do that, huh? Well, I knew it, but when you're operating with the Lord, Everything you do is a message. Everything you do is a message. <coughs> the gospel truth is that when you give a cashier her money back, she will generally argue with you because her pride will tell her, I didn't make no mistake. I don't know who you think you are <coughs> trying to give me some money back. I, I gave you change for what you gave me. No, I'm sorry you didn't. <coughs> but that's who you are, and that's what you do, and that <coughs> is a message. That's a message. You deliver messages every time you act outside the ordinary, and that is what makes us different from those that we're trying to reach. And we do different things. We act out of the ordinary. So use God's treasure for yours and make it count according to his will. And wait for those words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. That's where we're headed. That's where we want to be. In the joy of the Lord.